Let's get into the big guns now. Catherine McGregor and Nicholas Reese uh, join us every Friday. Great to talk to you. Let's start with you, Nicholas. You'd be cock a hoop, wouldn't you, about an extra $270 billion sharpening up Australia's defences? Look, it is a big amount of money, isn't it, Chris? I mean, you could buy a fast rail from Melbourne to Sydney and possibly a good way to Brisbane for that sort of well, no, money. No um, one could get on it because Victoria's contaminating the country. Oh, the low blows have already begun. <laughs> <laughs> look, um, I We'll come accept, back to that look, issue. I, I, we'll come back to oh, the know, coronavirus. Let's stay on defence for now. I, I accept the strategic defence realities are changing for Australia, so I do accept that there is a need for Australia to step up its expenditure in this area. I do hope as well that uh, Australian industry can also benefit from this expenditure. It's a great opportunity to uh, improve Australia's uh, sovereign and industrial capabilities. Um, so I hope that that's spelt, sp uh, spent strategically well in that regard as well. Yeah, well, if it is sp spent well and without any cost overruns and stuff-ups, it'll be the first time in Australia's military procurement history, no doubt. But, Catherine, uh, this is your area of expertise. In fact, some weeks back, uh, might have been months back now, uh, you had an exclusive story in The Australian suggesting this was the, uh, the strategic direction that uh, Australia's defence procurement yeah. should go in. Tell us why it's important and, it and, and, and what matters here. Yeah, it aged pretty well. I, I, th thanks for that, Chris. I, I did write last November, in fact, 4th of November, uh, we had a splash in the Oz from two former Chiefs of the Air Staff, both saying that they were concerned that we weren't able to reach out and hurt a, pretend, a potential adversary far enough from our shores, that we needed to look at hypersonic missiles. Tick, we are doing that that we needed to improve our ability to achieve what in the trade is called kinetic effects, namely strike with missiles against uh, enemy surface vessels and submarines, both from the air and below sea, and improve our mine warfare capability. The PM addressed every one of those issues in his address on Wednesday, and I was delighted. I'm not, you know, not crowing about get, having to get it right. I, I had a very well-sourced story uh, and wrote it, but it's good for the country because, frankly... This is a hedging strategy about two things. One is there has been a relative decline in US capability in the Indo-Pacific. The much vaunted pivot has not really taken place. Uh, it has been rhetorical rather than substantive. So I think having more sovereign capability, as, as Nick's referred to it as, is a good move. And also the fact that there have been these unconscionable delays in bringing a replacement submarine into service. So having the ability to strike from the air and to enhance our space capabilities is an untrammeled good in terms of securing the archipelagic approaches to Australia, which is vital. And, Nick, keep your grubby hands to yourself on fast rail. You can go to your mates in Beijing and get the Belt and Road Initiative <laughs> to pay for that. They will. They have plenty, <laughs> plenty of fast rail in China. They'll give you all the expertise. They'll actually build it for you. 